one. All right, we're gonna continue with our GT500 install. As you guys can see, we have the flywheel installed. Bolts are in and it's torqued to spec. The next important thing to do is you wanna clean this flywheel thoroughly. Get all the fingerprints, any grease, anything like that off the flywheel so we can put the clutch on. Since we had pre-assembled the clutch earlier in the video, we're now gonna lift it into position and it's nice if you got a friend, a buddy, a spouse, makes life a lot easier to tighten a bolt when you get it up there to help hold things into position. Let's see if we can do this here. All right, next step here, obviously we need to tighten our bolts. We're gonna to torque them all to 25 foot-pounds or 33 Newton meters if you're of the metric persuasion. Nothing wrong with that. Um, we're gonna go in a cross pattern. Uh, Jeremy's finishing that up for us and uh, we'll move on here in a second. All right, everything's tight. Ready to go. We're gonna pull the alignment tool out and we're gonna move on to taking the measurements of the fingers and checking the distance on the bearing, which is arguably the most important step to all of this. I'm gonna slide this right out and be ready to go. So the very first measurement we're gonna take here, we're gonna go from the flat on the cover down to the round on the fingers. Now, what we're looking for here ideally is about 0.39, about 0.41, and maybe 0.43. Um, so we're going to shoot right across the flat here and I might want to make note too that our straight edge is right about an inch thick. So the numbers you guys are going to see are going to have this inch kind of added in and that's okay. As long as you keep track of that from the get-go, it's not a problem. Straight edge is in place. We're going to take the tail end of our calipers here and we're going to sneak right up on it and we're right at about 4.3. It's a little more than we'd want to see, but it's perfectly fine because as this gets broken in, these fingers are going to rise a little bit and it'll be right in the sweet spot. So we're happy with that. Next measurement we need to take, we need to go from the flat on the cover back to the actual engine block. And I'll explain this a little more here in a bit, but let's get this number while we're at it. We're going to go right up here like such. And there's our number. All right, we're going to take our third measurement, which is also a very important part of this. We're going to show this with the factory bearing installed. I want to show you guys how it comes up too short and would cause us a problem and why we provide a longer one in the kit. Take and place our straight edge across the front of the trans, and then we're going to take our calipers and sneak right in the back side here and get it flat up against the face of the bearing. I want you guys to notice we left the bearing extended and there is our measurement for that. So we've taken our measurements and we're gonna compare what we've got to make sure we have the correct compression on the actual slave. And I say compression because this bearing is gonna always ride on the fingers of the clutch. We have to make sure that it's being compressed about a half an inch to 625 to make sure that it's actually gonna disengage the clutch and not just pop the bearing. So our first two measurements gave us the actual finger height from the engine block. It comes out to be about 2985. When you look at the transmission with the OE bearing that came with the car, we come up at 3.479. The problem is this is way too short and the face of the bearing is never gonna touch the fingers of the clutch. Meaning the first time you step on the pedal, you're gonna explode the bearing, possibly destroy the clutch. So we're gonna go back, we're gonna replace with the bearing that we have provided, and we're gonna double check our measurements, make sure we get this spot on. This adds an extra 30 minutes to your install, but it also saves you the eight hours of taking it apart and doing it all over again. Make sure your brake fluid container is clean and depress your slave cylinder until the bubbles stop coming out. Remove your old slave cylinder and install new with your shim if it is needed. All right, we've taken our measurements, we've checked, we've installed the bearing, we've bench bled the bearing actually before we did the install. Uh, ready to put the trans in. That's basically the end of this video. If you like what you saw, check out the VMP site, you can check out the Manic Clutch site as well, and we'll see you guys next time.